In this video, I'm going to show you how to embed your live feed from your Foscam FI9821W into your web page. I've set up this uh, web site or web page specifically to allow you to do that as quickly and efficiently as possible. I'm going to link to that in the description of this video. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm using the API that Foscam provides to uh, snap a picture and then I'm re rigging that with a little JavaScript so that we can get some uh, updates. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to scroll down here and take you through the process. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a guest account and that's important and I have a nice big warning here at the bottom which I encourage you to read and I'll read it to you here anyway because it's important. It says do not use your admin account otherwise your guests will be able to take total control of your camera. So don't use your admin password uh, because people will be able to see it very easily by looking at the HTML of the, uh, of the page where you embed this and they'll be able to just change everything, lock you out essentially, record stuff, it's horrible, don't do it. Um, it says also keep in mind that guest users will be able to control various aspects of your camera like enabling and disabling the video feed, the speaker, and the mic. It can also do panning and tilting of the camera and so essentially what I'm saying there is uh, people on the internet will be able to listen to, view, and record whatever your camera is next to, even if that was not your intent. Okay, enough with the disclaimer. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a guest account. So I'm going to show you the process and essentially you're going to go to your camera, you're going to log in, and you're going to go to basic settings, user accounts, and you can see I have my admin account highlighted here. I'm going to click a blank space here. I'm going to make a guest account and I'm going to make my password test really simple and I'm going to say I want this to be a visitor. That's my guest account and I'm going to add that and as you can see I've added a guest account with the username guest and his privilege is visitor. All right, back to this page. Go to step two and you are going to put your IP address in the camera URL you are going to put your guest's uh, uh, username, which happened to be guest, and your password, test, whoops, and hit submit. And if all goes well, there I am in all my glory. Um, and this is updating once per second because I'm using some JavaScript to do that. And if you want that JavaScript, you'll scroll down a little further. And, and by the way, if you see your picture up there and it's moving, that is a good sign. That means everything's working properly. And by the way, notice I use my internal IP address. So this is not uh, accessible to the outside world. It's on my internal network. You could, if you've done port forwarding and all that good stuff, you can um, make this, uh, you can actually put your externally accessible um, don't, uh, IP there, you know, which is gonna be some like, it might be yourcamera.dyns.org or something like that. Um, whatever you're using for port forwarding or your IP address if you have a static IP. All right, so what do we do? How do we use this? Well, <clears throat> we have uh, two different things here. We have camera video code. So if you want that feed that I'm showing you up here, that's the camera video code. And if you want just a static snapshot, you would grab this. You'd click here, you'd copy it, and you would put it in a file. All right, and in this file, you're gonna just open it up with Notepad. And you're gonna put some basic HTML elements in there and you are going to paste your image. There it is. We're calling the image uh, HTML tag, and this is my IP address with uh, the API that uses a command uh, snap picture with my username, which is uh, guest, and my password, which is test. I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna double click that, which I've, well, I'll do it here. There you go. And there's my picture, and as you can see, it is not updating, which is kind of the way I want it, because that's the snapshot version. I'm gonna refresh it, and as you can see, I moved. So there you go, I'm refreshing it a few times so you get an idea of uh, you know, what that looks like. So uh, the idea, why would you want a static picture? Well, maybe you wanna lower the bandwidth, because if you are running this in like a video mode, it, and it's, it's you know multiple people are on your, your site, which again, I wouldn't recommend this externally, but it, for whatever reason, maybe you have a restaurant or something and it's okay to have it in a public space, you're fine with that. 
for your your guests to uh, to see what's going on. Um, you know, this will lower the uh, the the traffic, the network traffic to your camera, and your camera feeding all these various people. So you could make it so that when they come to your site, the page loads, and there you go. They get a quick snapshot on what's going on. All right, you want more. So if you want the video version, which we have in, in this picture, this is the update once per second. I'm moving around just so you can see how fast it updates. Um, you're gonna just copy this code instead. So we'll copy that. We'll go back to our file, our happy file here, and we'll just replace this little bit of information with what I copied, and that has some Java code. And again, what we're doing is we're loading an image and uh, that same call we made before, that's what's gonna load. And we're adding a parameter that doesn't really exist in the API, which is time. And so essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna get the current time, we're gonna slap it in there, and every second, that's what the 1,000 is, 1,000 milliseconds, it's going to take a new snapshot, essentially, and it's going to just do that every second. And the reason why we actually add that time parameter is because if we don't add the time parameter, uh, your browser or the person's browser will most likely cache the picture and it won't actually load a new picture because it'll be like, oh, I already have that picture. That's the same picture we had before, right? I mean, it's the same command. So by changing this parameter, the t equals, and having a variable number pop up there, um, then you know it'll say, hey, we don't have that version of the picture. Let's you know force a reload. So that's kind of a little trick there. So I'm going to save that. Now let's go back to this picture, which was the static. I'm going to refresh it, which should load my dynamic code, and that's it. Now we have dynamic code that's updating once per second. So um, that is essentially how you go, ab go about um, embedding code, or this type of code, into your web page, your, your live feed. Uh, if you are interested in doing the FI9, I'm sorry, FI8918W or the FI8910W, all the same dis uh, disclaimers apply, but there's a link here that'll take you essentially to this page, which is very similar, but the API is slightly different, so um, the code that it generates is, uh, is different and you'd have to use this particular um, page if that's what you wanted to do, if you wanted to work with these cameras. Anyway, that's how you do it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments.